Hello, everybody. Welcome to lesson seven of the course Deep Learning 101. This lesson is the second one on model optimization. In this video, I will explain to you how to tune the hyperparameters of your model using the Keras tuner. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I will start by explaining to you the general concept of tuning the hyperparameters of a model after which we will go directly into um, explaining the Keras Tuner framework. Um, more specifically, I will go into detail on how the hyperparameters class is used, and I will introduce you to two different tuning algorithms. One will be random search, the other one will be um, hyperband tuning. After these general explanations, we will then go into the code and put everything together to improve a model by tuning its parameters. I explained to you several times that at its core, training a neural network is the adjustment of the weights and biases. So these weights and biases are essentially the parameters that the training affects. But there are a number of other parameters which are not affected by training, but are set by the architect of the model, namely by you, the person who is coding the model itself. To name a few of these parameters that you can decide for when creating the architecture of your model, think about the number of layers. You can decide for yourself whether it should be two or three or 10 layers. Same goes for the activation functions being used, whether sigmoid or rectified linear unit or something else. And also um, the number of neurons in a layer is another parameter to be set, whether a layer should have five neurons or 10 or 50. And of course, this list is by no means exhaustive. There are a huge number of parameters of model that you have to decide for when creating the architecture. Now, the idea of tuning these parameters is to search for the best combination um, of these par parameters so that um, the model that's created um, has the highest performance on a specific task. Obviously, you can do this manually, by just uh, deciding, for instance, for a two-layer model, train it, look at the performance, and then uh, increasing the number of layers, doing the same thing, and comparing the performance of these different models. But um, it's much easier to find some kind of automatism where you have certain code and certain frameworks that realize um, a certain implementation of that code that do this exchange of our parameters for you and also do the whole testing. Let's have a quick look at the core concepts of the Keras Tuner framework, which we will use in this lesson to adjust the parameters of a model. Firstly, there is the hyperparameters class. And this class is just a container for the parameters of a model and their current values at each um, iteration of optimizing the parameters. It also contains some helper functions that um, help with defining possible values that you want to test when adjusting these parameters and trying out different models. To give an example on how this class is used in code, after creating an instance of the class, you can create the helper functions that I just mentioned. I put three different examples of them here. There are some more, which we'll also use. But with regards to the ones you see here, um, a Boolean um, defines as the name implies at a certain point, a value should have uh, the value either true or false. Um, choice means that a certain point in the model can have different kinds of values. Um, the method takes also a list of these values that you can define by yourself. And during the tuning, these different values are then tried by the tuning algorithm. And then there is float, and with float you can define a range of loads. Um, you define a min value, let's say zero. You define a max value, let's say five. And you also define um, steps um, to be taken to define which values can be created. For instance, if you have um, min value zero, max value five, and the step is 0 0.5 um, during tuning, the possible values would be zero, 0 0.5, one, 1 1.5, and so on and so forth. Using these helper methods, you can define the search space of different model configurations. As you can imagine, this space of configurations might become very large rather quickly. 
Imagine you are using just two of these methods, let's say choice and float, and you define um, 100 different choices and 100 different float values um, in your potential model configuration. Now, 100 times 100 is 10,000, which means you have 10,000 different combinations to try out. So how do you find the best combination? Well, the simplest solution is, of course, to try out each and every single one. But in a large search space, this might take a very, very long time. So there are different heuristics that you can use to come to a solution that might be suboptimal, but at least you come to it much quicker than trying out every single combination. And one of them is a random search tuner. So the idea here is to randomly sample from the possible space and you define how the sampling works during tuning. And the tuner itself, after defining how to sample, then searches based on the sampling decision the best model that it can find. The drawback of this random search tuner is that each of the sampled combinations will be trained for the whole defined training range. For instance, if you define that a model should be trained for 100 epochs, then random search trains each of its sample configurations for 100 epochs. Now this is bad because as a human observer, you sometimes will see that some models are so badly configured that already after five epochs, you see that the results will be bad. And the idea of hyperband tuner is to rule out the combinations that showcase early on that they are bad. So how this works is that the hyperband tuner samples randomly as a random search, but only does partial training. For instance, it might train only for five epochs or even only for one epoch. And of all the samples that are trained for this, let's say, one epoch, it takes the ones that have the best results. And then these best models are reevaluated by training them again, this time for more epochs. Let's say instead of one, you train them for five epochs. And then um, again, these models are evaluated and the best ones are kept. And these best ones are then trained for um, a bigger number of epochs. Until at the end, the really, really best choices after several iterations are trained fully for the whole range of epochs that you defined. So let's put it all together into an end-to-end -end tuning pipeline. At the start, in this first cell, I'll be downloading the data. As I did before, I'm using the MNIST dataset. Um, I'll be do some data splitting, I'll do some pre-processing, nothing unusual. Um, I've explained all of this before. Let's just quickly run the cell so that we have a data set that we can use. More interestingly, in the second cell, I will define a method that will build me the hyperparameter model. Now, building this hyperparameter model is very, very similar to the standard model building that we did before. before. So as per usual, I'm using the sequential API and I define different layers that I use in the model. But in this particular case, what I'll be doing is I'll be using the instance of the hyperparameters class that is a parameter for this method to define different possible values that this model can have in different places. I'll start when adding the second layer, which is a dense layer. But in this case, instead of specifying the number of units, like the number of neurons to be used by a fixed value, I'll be using the int method of the hyperparameters class. Um, I give this uh, variable that I create a name, and I specify a minimum value, a maximum value, and a step size. So as I explained before, what this means is the potential values, i.e. the potential number of units of this dense layer can be 32, 64, 96, and so on and so forth, because the step is 32 when it starts also at 32. 
until the maximum value of 512. Another variable I introduce is a choice variable. In this case, the choices given are the activation functions that can be used for this dense layer. I give two choices, either rectified linear, linear unit or the tangens hyperbolicus. And lastly, I define a Boolean value, which can take, obviously, true or false. And it specifies whether a configuration should contain a dropout layer. So in some of these configurations that the tuning algorithm tries out, the models created will contain a dropout layer. In some cases, it won't. After that, I build the hyperparameter model by calling the build model method with an instance of the hyperparameters class. I do this last one just to test it out. It seems to work perfectly. Um, and this method is called during the tuning process several times. And each time the potential values are transformed into actual values. And once this is done, this is an actual sequential model that can be used by the tuner. Next, I'm defining the random search tuner as a tuner to be used as a hypermodel. I'll choose the method that we just created so that the tuning algorithm knows which method to use to create an instance of the model. I'll define an objective to be optimized. In this case, val accuracy. You can define different ones. Loss is the one that is very prominently used. And then I define two different parameters that specify how often um, evaluation should be executed. The one is uh, max trials. So this specifies how many different configurations should be tried out. As I explained before, random search samples from the overall search space. And setting max trials to three means that the random search should only try three different combinations, which is pretty low. But uh, for this tutorial, I do not want to wait too long for this code running th to run through. The other parameter that is very important is the executions per trial. <clears throat> As you know, there's a certain random element to the training algorithm. And executions per trial means that, um, that by this number, I specify how often a certain configuration should be executed. So in this case, two means when you have a certain um, configuration of parameters of the model, should execute this parameter combination two times and um, test both of them out to see how good that combination is. Last one, last three um, parameters are not that important. Um, one thing is that um, the, there are certain things that the tuner stores um, uh, during training. Um, and during tuning and that can be reused later and you can specify a directory where so we start you define a project name and you define that in this directory that is specified that the files shall be overwritten in each call of um, of the tuning method so let's just execute it to create the tuner i can also um, print out the search space summary so what it gives me here is essentially um, uh, um, uh, the, 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 the different um, uh, configurations that I specified with the different ranges. So as I said before, I have the units, um, which is an integer, the activation, which is a choice, and the dropout, which is Boolean, and also with the different potential values to put it out. And of course, because I said max trials to three, the default search space is three. And now I will start the actual tuning algorithm. As you can see, it starts with going through the first um, uh, combination to be tried out and trains this model for the number of epochs and then goes through, all, through the rest of the potential configurations. After tuning is finished, I can create a list of the best models that the tuner found by calling the method getBestModels and specifying how many models I want to have. From this list of models, I can get the actual best one by accessing the first element. 
And then I can build um, an actual model from it that I want to use in a production environment. In this case, because I didn't specify an input layer with a specific shape, when I created the model, I yet just used a flatten layer. Um, I have to do that now. So as an input shape, I define the dimensions of an image of the MNIST dataset, which is 28 times 28 pixels. And I can print out a summary of that model. So if I run the cell, what you see here is the best model that was found by the tuner. In this case, it decided for 512 neurons for the dense layer. As you remember, I defined a whole range of, of values that could be used here. I decided 512 was the best one. And also, it left out the dropout layer. If I call the result summary method of the tuner, it will print out the different versions of um, different combinations of models and their corresponding accuracy score. So for instance, um, uh, because I put the search base to size 3, it gives me out three different accuracy values for three different combinations. For instance, the first one with 512 units on the dense layer um, using the tangent Zyberbolicus method as the activation function, not putting in the dropout, and it gives me a score of 96.94. And then there are different uh, things to try it out, uh, including the dropout layer, um, putting uh, 64 units on the, on the dense layer and using ReLU as an activation function, and it gives me out an accuracy that is slightly lower. So um, with this model that I created, um, I can use it actually in production. It contains the configuration that I wanted to use and that the tuner advised me to use as the best one. And it contains also the weights and biases of the model, which means it's an actual trained model ready to use. But imagine I don't want to do that. Imagine I just want to have the configuration of the model, but then retrain it on different data. For instance, I could decide that I want to train it on more data. What I can do then is to get the tuner to get me the best hyperparameters. As get best models, this returns me a list, the size of which is specified by a parameter, in this case 5. And from this list, I can get the best combination of the hub parameters that the tuner found by accessing the first element. So this year, best HPs, the first element, will be an instance of the hub parameters class, which contains the best combination of values. And with this, I can again call the previously defined build model class, and it will return me a model that contains this configuration, but is not trained yet. And what I can do then, for instance, is I can combine the different data points that are split up previously in the beginning of this notebook. And then I can retrain this model with the best parameter combination on all the data. So let's just quickly do that. And because I only specified one epoch, it will be done very quickly. And now I have the best parameter combination trained on all the data, and I can use this trained model in production. And that's it for the random search tuner. Now let's take a look at the hyperbend search tuner, um, which might be a little bit different. Using the same notebook, I'll just change the content of one cell, which is the definition of the tuner to be used. So instead of random search, I'm using hyperband, using the same objective. Um, the build model method is exactly the same as before. And the only parameter I'm specifying is the maximum number of epochs. So as I explained before in the slide for the hyperband tuning algorithm, the um, tuner will try out a different number of epochs, starting low with just one or two, and then going up to this max value. There are a number of other parameters to configure these tuning class, but for now, just let's just keep it simple and just choose five epochs, very low number, and see what it does. Let's run the cell. 
that give out the search space summary. So three different um, uh, potential combinations to be used. And let's start the search. And what you will see is it starts with just two epochs and then goes up over time. And what we will see once the tuner finished searching for the best combination is that it went to 10 different trials and the best accuracy it found was at 97.79%, which is a little bit better than the random search tuner we used before. Now with that result, we can, if you want to, do the same thing as before, um, getting the best model and using it in production or getting the best parameter combination and retraining a model with that combination of parameters. And that's it with regard to hyperband tuning. And that's also it with regard to the tuning of parameters in general. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope to see you next week for lesson eight, which will be about convolutional neural networks and how they are used for image processing.